please be seated. Well, as we hear the word of the Lord for us this morning, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus. We join with that account of the Israelites crossing the Jordan River. It's taken them 40 years to get to this place in the history of the Israelites. 40 years. We got a little catching up to do with them, don't we? It's only been 10 years for us to get to this place. Let me share with you where the Israelites were in the, in the end of the journey as we pick it up today. We hear in Joshua chapter 4, verse 19, that on the 10th day of the first month, the people went up from the Jordan and they camped at Gilgal. That's a place in Israel across the Jordan River into the promised land near Jericho. And it took them 40 years. Can you imagine the stories they told over those 40 years? I mean, you know what it's like, right? When you are traveling and you come, come to your final destination, what do people ask you about? How was your trip? What did you experience? Along, uh, how was traffic? Any, anything wrong? The weather? Did you run into any bad weather? Where, where did you stop and get a meal? Can you imagine answering those questions after 40 years? We've got some of those answers, don't we? We've been here in this journey 10 years. 10 years since the Lord had us break camp and engage in this uh, stepping out in faith crossing over, and now building upon the promises of God. And, and we've got stories to tell. I bet Don's got some really good stories to tell. Yeah. And, and Dick, too, right? And, and Maria, our former uh, uh, Early Child Education Center director, and now Jamie, in this journey of which we're, where we've been traveling, you bet, you've got stories to tell. I've, I've got some, too. I'll sit over a cup of coffee with you, and we can talk about that. But here we are today, in our journey our journey of stepping out in faith and crossing over, building upon, is in so many ways similar to the Israelites. Let, let's, let's recount that a little bit. Joshua, we're told in verse 1 of chapter 3, and all the Israelites shed out, set out from a place called Shittim and went to the Jordan River. And they camped there before crossing over the river. Now, if you remember, what the Israelites were called to do is be ready, right? When the Holy Spirit is moving, in the sense that when you see the priests pick up the ark, which is the presence of God among us, when you see them move towards the Jordan River, you're to break camp. And we experienced something similar. It wasn't necessarily the ark, because we don't have that anymore, but it was the Spirit moving among us. We believe that as we come together as the body of Christ and in a voting assembly, bathed in prayer, led by the word of God, that when the church makes a decision in that voting assembly, that is a spirit-led decision, and the spirit called us 10 years ago and in different steps along the way, come, let's step out in faith, let's cross over and build upon. And so when the priests took up the ark, and moved to the Jordan River, then you'll know which way to go, God says, because you've never been this way before. Never been this way before. I've never been this way before. In fact, it's been generations since our congregation has been this way before. It's part of our DNA. This is the fifth, or even seventh, depending on how you want to count, buildings and or locations that this congregation has been in, in its 247 years of mission in the Shenandoah Valley. So as part of our DNA as a, a church body, this is nothing new to us. But for you and me in this generation now, this is new. And as we experience this journey, this newness, this stepping out in faith, crossing over and building upon, we see ourselves, I can see myself, reflected so much in the in the journey of the Israelites. In verse 14, we pick it up. So the people broke camp to cross the Jordan River. The priests carrying the Ark of the Covenant went ahead of them. They began the journey of stepping out in faith. They had to break camp. Now, over 40 years of the Israelites' wanderings, they had broken camp many times. 
but, but it's not like we enjoy breaking camp today where you stand outside your camper, press a button, and the canopy folds up, right? Breaking camp for the Israelites was a lot different. Stakes were driven into the ground, had to be pulled up. Cattle and animals had to be rustled together. The tent had to be literally folded up and packed away. It wasn't an easy chore. If I were in those Israelites' shoes, I can imagine what I'd be thinking. Really? Again? It's pretty good right here. Why can't we just stay? I don't want to break camp again. Isn't that the challenge of our hearts as people? That when the Spirit moves us, it's so easy for us to hesitate in a big thing and the little things as well. Lord, I'm guilty of it. Change is hard. And the hesitancy, hesitancy to follow the Spirit when you're moving is a challenge for us. But yet you call us to step out in faith. The Israelites did. And when they got to the edge of the Jordan River, we're told in verse 15 that the Jordan is at flood stage during the harvest. And these priests were carrying this hundred pound or hundreds of pounds uh, ark on their shoulders. And they're seeing the Jordan River at flood stage. And you want me to do what, Lord? Take this step of faith into this rushing torrent that I know will sweep me away. And yet this is what you're asking me to do in stepping out in faith. Guilty again, Lord. Because when you call me, and when you call us, hesitant, yeah, and guilty at times. And questioning whether you can really do it. Yeah, there it is. But they stepped out in faith. Those priests carrying the ark took that step into the flooded Jordan River. How is God going to respond? As soon as the priests who carried the ark reached the Jordan and their feet touched the water's edge, what was going through their mind? What was going through your head? Doubt? Fear? All of the above? Sure. We've experienced all of that in life. We've experienced all of that in these last ten years. We've experienced all of that as human beings stepping out in faith because we're human beings. Beings. And when they stepped out, what happened? When you step out in faith, when God calls you to respond to Him, when His Word leads and guides and directs, when He calls you before His gracious throne, before the cross of your redemption, and say, and He says to you and me, Trust me that I will forgive your sins, step out in faith, how do we respond? Maybe the more important question that we ask ourselves, that we focus on, and that we see at work, isn't how do we respond, but what does God do? For after all, it was the Lord God who had told these Israelites, step out in faith. And we believe that's what the Lord God has called us to do as well step out in faith. And here we are today. How did God respond for the Israelites? By grace. By power. By might. By showing off. Not just for the Israelites. Not just for his people. But for all the lands around there. The water, we're told in verse 16, from upstream stopped flowing. It's not that the water went away. It was still there. But it was held at bay. An act of God's grace on behalf of his people. I will hold this water at bay so that you might cross. To cross over where I want you. You know, Jesus, when he became human, when he took upon flesh, born of the Virgin Mary, which we just confessed, Jesus held at bay his divinity while he was here on earth. He was still divine. It wasn't taken away, but it was held at bay until the right moment when it would be revealed then. When Jesus held for us our sins upon the cross, that then his glory would be revealed in his new life that we might be able to cross over and trust in life and 
faith in Jesus. You see, this water that was held at bay, it piled up in a heap a great distance away at a town called Adam. <laughs> what if you were living in Adam at that time? wonder how high that water got piled up. If you had a little, uh, little, little summer cottage there on the stream of the Jordan River, was it washed away? I don't know. We're not told that. But we're told that the people of Adam could testify to the power of God that day because the water was piled up there in this town. And we can testify to the power of God at a place called Golgotha, Calvary, where God worked in his grace to bring us together as a people. And the commonality that we share together today is that blood of Jesus that washes us clean from our sins and brings us together for the hope of salvation, that we too cross over as God's people in faith where he wants us to go. And we have one another to encourage ourselves in this journey, like we've been doing. Thank you so much for your prayers for me, for my family. Thank you for your words of encouragement to me, my family, and to our leaders to continue to do what we've been called to do. Let's, let's cross over in this journey that now we're seeing coming to a completion. Thanks be to God. But it's not just this journey that we're about. It's about the journey of faith and life together as God's people. This is just a building. This is just a place. We are the body of Christ. And we have the opportunity to bring that message, sharing the life and love of Jesus Christ with all, our mission, to a world out there that needs to know Jesus Christ. That they too might join us in crossing over to where God wants us to be. And where does he want us to be? Well, the Israelites, we're told, the people crossed over opposite Jericho. Do you know what Jericho represented? Think back a little bit in your Old Testament account. When God was speaking to the first patriarch, his name was Abram at the time. Later, God would change his name to Abraham. What did God promise? One of the three promises that God promised Abram, Abraham, was that there would be land for his descendants. Jericho represented that promised land. The people were home. They were where they were supposed to be by a promise begun hundreds of years earlier. Brothers and sisters in Christ, please don't hear me say that this is our promised land. This is not. This is not our promised land. Uh, there's a group of people called Mormons who believe that earthly things are promised land. We're not that. Our promised land isn't defined by walls and floors. It isn't defined by humanity and time. Our promised land is the place that we're called to be in eternity, where we have the fulfillment of God's promises, where our salvation is known. That's our promised land. And ultimately, isn't that where Christ Jesus has taken us? To our promised land? To know how you get someplace. To know how the Israelites got from captivity in Egypt through the wilderness to the promised land is what we're recounting in, in just a part today. And, and how we get to be where we are. Not just here, testifying to the work of God, but ultimately to our promised land in salvation, is our story now of stepping out in faith and crossing over and building upon it. Now the priests who carried the ark remained standing in the middle of the Jordan until everything the Lord had commanded Joshua was done by the people. Those priests stood in the middle of that riverbed that was once at flood stage just seconds ago. Now the water piled up miles upstream in Adam. And the priests stood there with that ark on their shoulders until all the people crossed over. I have no idea how long that took, but we're talking about millions of people who crossed over during that time frame. Hesitancy, which might have once been there in those 
priests and in those people because of what they saw before them now gives way to strength. And isn't that an, a, a characteristic of the faith that we live in? Strength. Strength is God's people to testify to his working among us. This is our God at work. And we have an opportunity to be about that saving work. So the people hurried over. And in verse 11, we're told that as soon as all of them had crossed, the ark of the Lord and the priests came to the other side while the people watched. They stood there and watched the working of the Lord until all of their brethren had crossed over with them. You see, at that moment, any kind of questioning that was there, hesitancy of the evil one with, within those people, any kind of questioning or hesitancy that might be among us, by faith, gives way now to trust. We can look back, right? And we can see, the Lord is trustworthy. What did I have to fear? Why did I question? Why did I hesitate? Why did I do anything that wasn't of his leading and guiding? Well, God himself is trustworthy. And if I can see that now, then guess what he's going to be tomorrow? And a week from now? And two years from now? that same trustworthy God that brings us together as God's people, like with the Israelites. On that tenth day of the first month, the people went up from the Jordan, and they camped together at a place called Gilgal. And Joshua set up at Gilgal the twelve stones that they had taken out of the Jordan River. And out now in place are facing we have nothing to dread, nothing to fear. God is working on our behalf, not just now and in this place, but taking us to our promised land. And, and, and what we have the opportunity to do is simply respond in what he's given to us, a saving faith, and that marks faithfulness in you and me as the body of Christ. You don't have a stone in your hand today. We don't have 12 stones like for the Israelites would mark the crossing. But we are going to do something unique after worship today. I hope you, you can stay. Many, uh, I know some of you can't, but I hope you, you, you all can stay. We're going uh, to walk through this space and, and give this space a little bit of a house blessing. And there are going to be some unique characteristics of our house blessing that we're going to do with our hands. These instruments that the Lord lets us use in life to testify to the saving faith that we have in him, in Jesus. And so we'll be sharing in some unique ways together as God's people with our hands as we move through this house blessing, like, like 12 stones being set up to mark the blessing of our lives, of, our, of this day, and even of this world. Is not God faithful? And trustworthy? Is he not good? As he's called us to step out in faith and cross over and now build upon him. Thanks be to God, my friends. This is the God we know and live with together. In Jesus, our Savior, in whose name we pray, for whom we pray. Let the church say amen. 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 Heavenly Father, thank you for the blessing of your word that has led and guided us now even to this day, to this place to a relationship with one another under you, and to a relationship with you in eternity. How good you are. And we, we praise you, Lord, and we know that you have loved us, that we might love you as well. May the, the joy of your word and the fellowship we share together now continue to build among us to be the body of Christ you've called us to be in your mission, that we might share the life and love of Jesus Christ with all to the world. For your glory and praise, in Jesus' name we pray. May the peace of God that passes our understanding keep our hearts, our minds, our spirits, our lives together, our relationships with one another. In Christ Jesus, our Savior, may he be praised and glorified.